Thank you. This is John Waters speaking electronically like Cecil B. Demented. My movie of the same name. Tonight, we're taking over both the New York Film Festival and the Bronx Zoo. Imagine, finally, the animals that get exposed to shock cinema, the art kind. I had a scene in polyester, you'll see that at intermission, where I showed a festival concession stand ad for a classy drive-in that gave champagne and caviar out and had dust to dawn Margarita Dura shows. Well, tonight we're pretty close to that. For real, subtitles at the drive-in, finally. I grew up in a drive-in. We went every single night, even in the winter. They had heaters in the car that smoked and set your car on fire. I, I used to forget to take the speaker out and ripped out the windows, pulling away, dragging the pole. Oh, my parents would be so furious when they got home with their car. I used their car because it had a bigger trunk to sneak in friends. Lots of bad behavior at the drive-in. We drank beer, smoked pot, had sex. I even got arrested at the drive-in for underage drinking. <laughs> in court, the cops testified some of the girls were seen urinating outside the car. Well, it was a long walk to the concession stand. Please, don't do that tonight. Stay in your car, and if you have to, use a bottle. Gatorade has the widest lip for that. Today, drive-ins are the opposite. They're family-oriented. They don't allow R-rated movies. Uh, they, they have flea markets, antique car shows. Tonight, we're going back to the good old days of exploitation and showmanship. Get in free and pay to get out. That was the old trick drive-ins used to make patrons stay all night and spend more money at the concession stand, more than the ticket would have cost. I got my exploitation education at the drive-in, and tonight, thanks to the New York Film Festival, you will too. Art exploitation at its best. First up, Gaspar Noe's Climax, an amazing, yes, an amazing dance, LSD, mental breakdown drama that will give you pause about psychedelics forever. <laughs> it's the red shoes meets the hallucination generation. <laughs> Gaspar Noe is the real thing, a great auteur who not only takes you to the edge of extreme cinema, he pushes you over. Just think, irreversible, enter the void, love, the worst date movies of all kind. Films nobody ever saw with their own parents. Climax is so frenzied, so drug-drenched, that you may need psychiatric chair afterwards, something, unfortunately, the New York Film Festival cannot offer tonight. Rolling Stone called Climax Busby Berkeley by way of Hieronymus Bosch. Other reviewers raved a provocative masterpiece, one of the most unsettling depictions of hell ever put on the screen. Still others disagreed. Noe guarantees that most viewers, unlucky enough to find themselves the victim of watching the movie, will have the worst experience of their life. All sounds good to me. I love a feel-bad movie, especially if it's French. <laughs> I already feel good before I go to a film. Why should I expect a motion picture to make me feel warm and fuzzy? I want a movie to grab me, slap me around, and show me a vision of hell I've never experienced. Climax is just that picture. Ladies and gentlemen, and everybody beyond and in between, welcome to Art Movie Hell at the Drive-In. I'll be back after the intermission. Oh, Don't you stayed. In 10 minutes. You the faithful. You the hardcore New York Film Festival audience. Yay! Our second feature, Solo, a film known for, quote, notoriously emptying out theaters in record time, as one trade journal put it, has been banned in practically every country in the world. Yet here we are tonight in a drive-in with Solo for the very first time I've ever heard of. We're here to celebrate Pasolini and his flash of inspiration 
as Salo has been called, where he takes Marquis de Sade's 120 days of Sodom and relocates it to a northern Italian town created in 1943 by Hitler for Mussolini. Pasolini worried, this, would this be clear to the normal person seeing the film? Well, there's nobody here normal tonight, so that's, let's not fret over that. <laughs> Salo is an amazing movie, essential to have seen, as the New Yorker film critic put it, but impossible to watch. Pasolini once boasted that he was a communist, a Catholic, and a homosexual. Oh. To me, he was a saint, murdered by a hustler named Pino the Frog a week before Salo was released in theaters. I detest the power in today's world, he stated at the time, and one of Salo's actresses explained further that Pasolini was just more of an artist. He was someone trying to live in his time with dignity. Nothing is more contagious than evil, a character says in tonight's film. And in this story of horrors telling filthy little tales to arouse their impotent audience of fascists who claim to be the real anarchists, so different from today's political situation? <laughs> Replace these evil ruling class monsters with Trump's circle, and it could be the same circle. <laughs> Imagine the cross-eyed child torturer who dresses in drag as a bride and shows his asshole in a rectal beauty contest recast with Mitch McDonald or Bill Pence. <laughs> The moral of this story would still work. Could this film be made today? 14-year-old boy and girl extras doing circle of shit scenes? <laughs> True, the feces was chocolate, unlike what I used in Pink Flamingos. <laughs> but still, still, the young cast said the only problem was to keep from laughing while they shot. The mood was supposedly jovial on set, and Pasolini was reportedly quiet and gentle with the teenage actors. Imagine their memories. When I was 15, I ate shit for Pasolini. Oh, those were the days. <laughs> oh, God, there are some scenes in the solo you won't believe. Tongues cut out, penises being sliced, but it's all for art. The haunting score made up of the sound effects of bomber planes and the misleading carefree theme by Anio Marcocino and that last shot. So simple, so depraved, so purely evil but beautiful. I cry every time I see it. Ah, the old days of drive-ins. Rowdy viewers honked their horn every time there was gore or nudity. But tonight... But tonight, watching Solo, I want you to change that. Tonight, I want you to honk your horn every time you see art. All right? <laughs> Solo, a horn-honking masterpiece of sadism, joy, and the thrill of extreme filmmaking. Thank you, New York Film Festival. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, the art films from hell here tonight. Get more out of life. See a movie. See Solo.